All right, at the heart of my theory is that a neutron is one, a proton is almost the size of a neutron, and an electron is like tiny. I'm going to make this very simple. The neutron and the proton are always found together. The neutrons don't just float around in space. They're, they're totally not neutral. They are negative nuclear particles. They're almost the size of a proton, only a little bit bigger, and because of that biggerness, they have more negativeness than the proton, so the negativeness exceeds the nucleus. It's not neutral at all, the nucleus. It has a negative connotation, pushes the electron away, keeps the electron in an orbit, and the, the difference in the potential of the neutrons to the protons will decide on where the electrons reside in the orbitals. And I'll show you that in just a basic drawing. All right, as basic as you can get. Uh, there could be two or three or 20 or 50, whatever there is inside of here, there are protons and neutrons. Every time you increase one proton, it becomes another element. Every element increases its mass by, it goes into the next atomic number, and the electrons normally follow the nuclear particles. Now, so you have neutrons and protons. Now, why are they right together? I mean, uh, yeah, neutrons and protons. They're right together. Well, the reason they're together is one of them is neutral, one of them is positive. And they bang into each other and hold each other, so they glob into this. They're positives and negatives. But the neutrons exceed the protons, so they expel negativity so the electrons want to come down and get together with the protons and the excess neutron says, in the negative of the neutron says, no, 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 you stay out there. And I'll tell you what, you stay out there 0 0.002 angstroms or whatever it says. And then you can have some buddies come and they won't be able to get to you. You're going to push them that way. And so they have to reside here. And because they're here, they're going to have to push those guys that way. And that is your quantum states. All right. You're probably thinking big deal that's, you know, the quantum stuff, uh, so what? Well, there's a, there's a lot more to this story. Now, Tesla said if you want to know the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. He was a genius. Belikowski was a genius. Both of them denigrated by the academics who are not geniuses at all. I'm going to show you what the reality is here. All right, I have a video up on um, YouTube. It's this one here, Hutchison Effect. Um, and an iron bar. No, well, that's not mine, Hutchison. I have one up there myself. Oh, here it is. Hutchison effect on matter is discussed. Now, watch what happens. He's bombarding this with frequencies. Um, and what he's doing literally is vibrating the molecular structure of crystals and it's shaking them so violently that they're they're falling apart. And this is an iron bar. And he does, this guy is, is incredible. And, and um, that is just the collapse of matter. So, I'm going to explain some other things. All right, here I am bragging about, you know, <laughs> I, I did a lot of this stuff. I did molecular uh, stuff from since, since the whole thing started, back in the quantum stuff. Uh, where are we going here? Okay, hold on, here it is. But, I mean, you can see, this is not something you do on Thursday and then forget about it. So, it's, uh, now, let's go, look at this now. Here's the key. Watch, watch this whole deal here. That bridge is, is, a, is just like the, the, the um, structure between the, the atom. So you have, once it starts to shake with the frequencies that um, Hutchinson was emitting, he's, he has to continuously shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, until it literally throws itself into oblivion. And that's when those metal bars collapse. All right, this is the last part I'm going to go over. There's, there's a lot more to this, but let's just stop after this. Now, the sun emits these particles that we're talking about, light, and they're electrons, and they're spinning because the, the frequency of, of vibration inside of the, the molecules up there are so extreme that the bonds explode and shoot off particles, uh, the electrons and they shoot out the electrons in a spinning vortex towards the Earth. So their energy and their mass when they leave. As soon as they hit the va vacuum of space, there's nothing for them to interact with anymore, so they become quiet and, um, and, and dark. Uh, but they're still moving and there's still energy. 
So they're the dark energy and the dark matter that everybody's been looking for. Now, once it hits the Earth and it hits the nuclear par particles that have, are surrounded with uh, clouds of electrons, it vibrates those, making them create heat. And what doesn't get um, absorbed as heat gets reflected back out and bounces back out as radiated as light. And then it all weighs stuff, and there's a, this is vortex particle theory. And it has a mass, and it, and it weighs stuff, and it's hitting the Earth, and the Earth is growing very, very quickly. So that's what light really is. It's the dark energy and the dark matter in space.